you're at a 10. We got to go to a two before you. Right. We're jealous about an Instagram picture. We're not being chased by a lion right now type shit. Exactly. Bitch, what I was trying to say is this situation got me so wet and so so dry at the same time. What's up, bitches? Welcome back to another episode of So Wet, So Dry. I'm one of your hosts, Autumn, like the season, and I am letting life passively go by, even though I know that I'm the only agent of change. Oh, my God. And I work in entertainment. Okay, and I'm your other host, Fiji, <laughs> like the island, like the water. I've been listening to a lot of old Lana Del Rey lately, and I um, work in marketing and social media. If you guys are new here, what we do on So Wet, So Dry is we deep dive topics about sex, relationships, personal identity, all through the lens of pop culture, internet trends, and our community's experiences. We do post polls for every single episode on our Instagram, so definitely check that out at So Wet, So Dry. The O's are zeros. And wherever you're listening right now to this episode, please just stop and subscribe, follow, Mm -hmm. like, share. You know what I mean, guys? Like, that would be so cool if you guys did that. Yes, please. Join our community of confused pussies. And today we are talking about jealousy and open relationships. Is it normal to experience jealousy in open relationships? Is it possible to stop experiencing jealousy? How do you cope with jealousy? All of that. But before we get into that, we're going to start the episode as we always do, talking about what we're so wet and so dry about in this very moment. And I'll go first. Okay, so I'm so wet this week because I had my friend Sean. He's one of my best friends. He lives in Nashville. He made a pit stop in Miami. Shout out Nashville. (laughs) Shout out Nashville. He made a pit stop in Atlanta before moving to Miami because he just got a really cool job as a personal assistant for a celebrity. So I'm so fucking happy for him. And my other friend Will came and their other friend. We met up with our little friend group. We haven't all been together in a while. We got messy. We got dinner. We got drinks. We went to all the bars. And I just love them. Like, I have a couple different friend groups, but they're one that I used to get together with, like, all the time during the work week. And it was just, like, healing, like, nice to be around friends. Like, it would break up the Monday through Friday. I mean, it would make me hungover way too often. So, like, it was refreshing after they left and I had my space back. But at the same as time, it always like, is. as yeah. it always is, because I had like everybody sleeping in my place, like a lot of people crammed into a one bedroom apartment. But like at the same time, like I never see them. So it's not like if I were to just have a bunch of my friends in Atlanta sleep over, like whatever. Um, but I just love Sean so much. So it was really good to see him. And I'm so excited for his future. Like I just always want to see my friends winning. So I'm just right. really happy for him. You really do, babe. You really yes. fucking do. And I think it's cool to have, like, like different friends for, like, different vibes, like, you know? So yes. I think that's nice that you can recognize that and, like, that's awesome. Um, I am so wet because I don't know if you guys know this, but Fiji is a really good wing woman. And she's been <laughs> pimping me out lately to, like, some girls, mm-hmm. some guys. Like, one of them is in prison. Like, I don't know. And, like, she really just be, like, saying my name in the room, you know what I mean? And she puts me on. So I'm, what about that? Even though nothing is going to happen with any of these people. Wait, did you talk to that girl? Yeah, and she was like, no, no. Just no. You you thought she was hot though, right? I did, but then it's just like, I don't know. I just like didn't get it for her. She was like, ha ha ha. Like, I don't even remember this. I was like, (laughs) well, yeah, because I took her phone, guys. I took her phone (laughs) and I was like, I DM'd. Autumn this is how from desperate. her account, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Hey, it's Fiji. You, this girl, I'm like, setting like y'all up. <laughs> Illy is what she said. It's Fi- yeah. you know, she said it's Fuji. Like there was mad typos, bro. Like, but anyways, I'm just wet about it. Like she's getting me in the girls' group chat. She's getting me some pussy on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like she's a real bitch, you know. So I'm exactly. wet about it. You're here in spirit, even though you're not in Atlanta. You oh, feel me? I know. Okay, so what I'm so dry about, okay, this is like a very complicated situation because I'm hesitant to even say I'm dry about it because I'm half wet. So 
when <laughs> so first of all okay you remember my little dude that i had like reconnected with on hinge okay yeah Yes. So he has been posting like a girl on his story a lot recently. So I was like, oh, he got a new bitch. Like, and I was kind of upset about it. I was like, damn, like, what the fuck? I'm supposed to be your only bitch, like whatever. But like, I've been putting him on the back burner. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's fine. He texted me when I was out with the rest of my friends. We linked up. We ended up fucking. It was really good. I was on my period. I wasn't black. So like that kind of sucks, but he didn't care. So he's like daddy for that. But I'm just like, we went to his place. He has a really nice place. Like he's a good man. Like he's so reliable, but I just feel like I'm still not over my situationship. And like, it doesn't even fucking matter because I know he's seeing this other girl too. And I don't really care. Like it, like we were never like that. Like it's fine, but I just like, like he wants to hang out with me this weekend and he's been trying to make plans with me and he always like makes fun of me because he's like, oh, you say you're going to hang out and you never do. And I don't know why I don't because we have good chemistry. He has money. He has a place. He's a nice guy. I'm comfortable with him. He has a car. Like there's no red flags here. And he's sexy. Yes. Like I, like I like having sex with him. Like we have good chemistry. Like and that's why I'm like, I said I wanted a situation ship, but then I have like the perfect opportunity for one without commitment with someone I've been like fucking with on and off for a year. This is the first time we fucked though. And I'm like fucking it up. So I just, that's why I'm like, if he goes away, like if he got a bitch, I would have been like mad about it because I'm like, you're supposed to wait for me. But at the same time, I can't be. But at the same time, he's not even going away. He's still hitting me up. So I don't know what to do. I haven't talked to my therapist this week either. But so. I'm confused, bitch. Exactly. What's the problem? I don't know what the problem is. I feel like it's almost that he's, like, too good. You uh-huh. know? That okay. it, like, not that it turns me off. Because what does Sean still say that you on. are? He's, like. He wasn't giving you trauma eyes. Or <laughs> yeah, something. exactly. So does exactly. he not give you trauma eyes? I mean, he's definitely like he still has some like bad boy qualities. Like it's not like he's just a little goody two shoes like finance bro. Like he's not that. You're right. Okay. I don't know. I really think it's that I'm not over my situation ship. And really, bro. Real. Yes, because I'm like, when I think about like giving up half of my Sunday, because the other half I have to edit, do I want to give it up to like, I'm comfortable with this guy, but not comfortable enough to give up my Sunday. But the last dude I was with, I was so used to hanging out with him on the regular that it was fine. So I think, I don't know if I miss him as much as just the pattern we were in mm-hmm. versus this feels like, you know how we were talking about getting out of your comfort zone when you're being remote and you're used to your own space. Like, I really feel like that's what it is. And that's why the only reason we linked was because I was already out with other people. But it wouldn't you know? have happened if you were just at home. Exactly. Because there's been a thousand opportunities and every time I'm like, oh yeah. And then I dub it. So Dude, it's like that I'm makes so problem. much sense, though. But like I could be getting good dick with like a nice guy that's not pressuring me for commitment or anything like that. But like, I don't know. I don't know if I want it anymore. I don't know. Oh, my fucking God, bitch. That's crazy to me. I really believed you. Like, I thought you really wanted it. I hope it's not that you're not over him, but maybe I it think is. it is. I think it is. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll work through it. We know. But that's wet that you got some sex. Like, I I... know. On my period, too. I was like, but. Yeah, that's crazy. But it's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Um, Okay, well, my dry is, like, pretty stupid. I don't really have anything, but I just, like, I'm I'm really lacking, like, music right now. So I really wanted to just ask the followers, the listeners, the supporters to drop some songs below for you, girl. Um, I really will look. I need new music. Like, I'm feeling uninspired. So help a bitch out. Okay. Um, you know what I do whenever someone that, like, Yeah, what do you cool? do? Whenever someone that, like, looks cool, like, posts, like, an aesthetic picture with a song on their story, I, like, look it up. So I definitely, okay. like, steal their music. And also, like, Spotify has those new swipe features. I know. I do like those. And I right? do like the mixes that Spotify makes for me sometimes, too. Like, release radar and, like, movies. Yeah. Sometimes it's release radar. On your right. playlist. So I'm like, 
Okay, yeah. All right, so let's get into this episode. As Fiji said, today we are talking about jealousy, specifically when it comes to jealousy within an open relationship. Mm. And as you guys may or may not know, I do have experience in this, so it's really my time to shine, you feel me? But we're going to start off just by defining what jealousy is. Not like, you know, we all know what fucking jealousy is, but in terms of the open relationship, like what really is that, you know? Mm-hmm. So I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on this because it really is a popping topic on YouTube. And so this uh, YouTube channel is called By Touch of Flavor. And they did a video called How to Handle Jealousy and Polyamory. But I did like how they defined jealousy in that video. And they basically talked about jealousy rather than being one sole emotion. It's rather an umbrella term Mm. for multiple emotions to exist at once. You got loneliness, you got anger, you got insecurity, you got sad. Like, you okay, got. Wait, can I ask a question within that? Like, of course. what's the like craziest? Because I feel that. Like, I've definitely been jealous and like pissed the fuck off. Right. And I've been sad as fuck. So, like, what's like the craziest jealousy you've been, like, emotion wise? Not necessarily the situation, but you can say the situation too. But like. I would say like a combination of anger and like mania like being manic because we all like you know I dabble in that we both dabble in that so I would say it's that and it's more like but the anger jealousy is and of course it's like it's not really anger at the end of the day you dig deeper and it probably really is insecurity or whatever Mm -hmm. but I think the anger with the combination of mania yeah like you just want to go out or like yeah like like, I've been pacing shaking screaming yeah Yep. Okay. Like yes. and irritable as fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's like jealousy is a you know, it's a lot of emotions rather than just one thing. Um, and this YouTube channel, they were like, honestly, when talking about jealousy and open relationships, don't even use the word jealous as like I feel jealous, like say more like I feel angry, like that sort of thing, because it could help you more. Right. Um, and that's what they recommend. Like they think using that word is not helpful at all. Um, And then so next, I do want to kind of define open relationships as well, because I've done ethical non-monogamy. That's the only thing I have experience in. That's the only thing I can speak on. That's the only thing I've done. But in terms of open relationships, poly relationships, like there's a lot of different words you can use. And I'm going to link this article below. I'm not going to really define every type of open relationship there is, because that's not this episode. We are talking about jealousy. But I will just list them off. And then if you guys are curious, we will link that article below and it does explain them. Um, And if you, Fiji, want, if you think we should define one of them that you're confused about, we can. Yeah, because some of these, um, they kind of make sense, but go ahead. Yeah, I pulled this from um, essentially like an online magazine situation. Like I said, I'll link it below. Okay, so we got hierarchical. (laughs) Hierarchical. Hurry, hurry. I think that's like when you have a primary partner, you have a secondary partner. You that's what whatever. I'm saying. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's a a, there's a hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't say hierarchical. What is <laughs> Anyways, so there's that. There's solo polyamory. There's throuples. There's closed V. There's quad. There's polyfidelity. <laughs> there's monogamish. There's don't ask, don't tell. And then there's swingers, bitch. And there's more on that Et list. Etc. <laughs> Et cetera. Because there's different kinds. And like, it's all, and you can create your own open yeah. relationship with boundaries. You know what I mean? Like, and you, and it's like, you don't need to label it, but it is kind of fun to like see. These yeah. are like the more, you know, and some of them it's like, don't ask, don't tell. It's like self-explanatory. It's like, That's my you do favorite, what you want. You don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but wait, what is, okay, solo solo polyamory, just real quick, doesn't make any sense to me because how can you be solo but polyamorous? Right, 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 right. So, so solo polyamory essentially is the polar opposite of the hierarchy polyamory. Solo poly folks don't need or want a primary partner and many describes themselves as their primary relationship. So the hierarchy polyamory, that's like the shit I like, the primary partners. Like you don't have secondary partners, but it's like there's that one. One. I mean, you could. Um, But I guess solo polyamory is like your primary relationship is the one with yourself and everything else is kind of even. 
So a lot of people are low key doing that because like, if you think about it, if you're out here, like fucking a couple different people and like, you know, whatever. And you're being, I feel like a lot of guys do that where they try to like keep it on the low and like whatever. Right. Like that's what they're doing. Quote unquote. But you're not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then the last one I just want real quick is what the fuck is a closed V? Closed, closed V. Vagina? Closed V. Great, great, great question. <laughs> um, the closed V is a handy way of describing the dynamics <laughs> of a poly relationship where two people share a romantic and sexual connection. <laughs> where two people share a romantic and sexual connection with the third, but not to each other. Makes sense? That's what it says. Okay. So the <laughs> dynamics were oh. two. Okay, so it's like if if me and you were both dating George, but me, we you don't. aren't fucking, but we're related in the V. Okay, so it's like so me and George you aren't is the fucking, vagina, but like we're he's so we don't have me. sexual or romantic. We have nothing. We have nothing. But we both we both are partners with someone. Like we have a mutual. Okay, a closed V. So that's like almost like um not what is it polygamy ish. Because with polygamy, isn't it that one <laughs> polygamy, isn't it that one partner is the like only one that can have sex with multiple people? Right. Sometimes. But polygamy is essentially like the like it can be culty because it's like the guy that has like multiple women. So like they could be a closed V or a closed W. No. Right. You know. Which is not something I don't think either of us would really be right. interested in. Right. I'm, like, more about that, like, even yeah, equal the lifestyle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so we can link that article down below if you guys want to, like, read more about different types of open relationships. But at the end of the day, I say create your own. You know what I mean? Like, it's really just about what works best for you and your partner. You can do anything you want. All right, guys. So let's talk a little bit about, like, a brief history on non-monogamy, jealousy, all that shit, Mm -hmm. it may surprise you to find out that Mm -hmm. monogamy has not always been the norm, okay? And that the reason we do monogamy has nothing to really do with relationships and jealousy at all. It really just has to do with this historical shit. So in this article, I read about how we tend to think about monogamy or the expectation that we can only share love with one other person And this idea has origins from the Roman Catholic Church. Essentially, how we think about monogamy or the expectation that we can only share love with one other person essentially has origins from the Roman Catholic Church is what this Mm. article said. We are not historians. I did this research. Mm. Anyways, so essentially it says in Roman society, it became a law that a man could only take one legal wife. And this was not because it was good for human relationships, not because they were like, oh, we can only fuck one person, but because it was good for the social economy. Like everything else, it all comes back to fucking money and all right. that bullshit. So it's basically like this law prevented elite males from monopolizing all the eligible women and ensures there were enough women to become wives of lesser men, like blah, blah, blah. And then essentially over generations, more children were born because of monogamous unions, which further expanded the population Mm. of Roman civilization. It was an efficient way of growing the population quickly and creating taxpayers and productive social units. So essentially the um, and it says up until about 800 AD, it was common even for priests to have multiple wives and mistresses. Mm-hmm. Um, in the church, however, was concerned that the offspring of these relationships would drain the church of money and wealth. So basically, like all this shit just about money, essentially. And the church was like the reason they were the ones that like really demanded sex only to be used for procreation. And that should only happen between one man and one woman. Sex as pleasure of the flesh was denounced. And so began the dark ages, blah, blah, blah. OK, so. This is interesting. As you know, guys, I have a lot of fucking experience. I knew with the she was church. gonna like this shit, bro. Because I went to two Catholic schools, one Jewish school, and one congregational church, two congregational churches. So when I was growing up, I had a lot of religion shit. 
But what's interesting to me is like, if you're Christian, if you're any sort of Christian, you probably know like the 10 commandments. And one of them is thou shall not covet your neighbor's wife, which is like, you shouldn't be jealous. Like jealous is like a bad emotion. And also it's like cheating and shit like that. But, and it's been a while since I've done any sort of religious shit. I'm pretty sure an audience, correct me if I'm wrong. The 10 commandments are also part of Judaism. Mm -hmm. Like, Jewish people follow it because that's like before Christ. Right. So I'm, but you, you know how so much of like religion is wrapped up in government and all of that. So I'm like, it makes sense that they would be like, oh, because you know, the whole religion, religious thing is like, you only love one God because before it was like paganism with like multiple gods. So it's like one God, one woman, like whatever. And Uh the population, but I'm like, are the Ten Commandments from God or are they from religion? I don't know. I just really want to know because. I know. I know. And I think it's crazy that like, I mean, I don't think it's crazy, but it's essentially like they're saying from this, like these monogamous relationships, more children were born and it was expanding the population. But does that even make sense? I don't. Well, get that. that's why they're trying to do all the abortion laws. And it right. also is on some racist shit, too, because, you know, we're all eventually white people are going to be gone or whatever, because we're all going to mix and have like multiple babies and shit. And people are also waiting. The people, the most people waiting to have babies are white women. So whatever but yeah that does make sense because that's why they fucking police women's bodies so much because it has to do with like growing the fucking economy like we're sheep and cows and not human beings and we're like god's like servants to like make sure we're like fulfilling our like duty of like giving birth and like being in these i'm watching the handmaid's tale right now (laughs) so it's very like but i'm like this is literally what it's giving bro that show is so good that women have all the power low key because men could not like maintain themselves like women would seduce them and come up and like whatever the fuck and men priests would spend all their money and uh, da, da, da. so again it's patriarchy's fault right we're the smart ones we have too much power right yeah so it's just interesting to see where it comes from because this is mostly about monogamy and non-monogamy but it's like the part about the expectation that we can only share love with one person like that's been yeah. so ingrained in like all of us um and it's just not true most like everything else that's ingrained with you living in the united states like it's just simply it's about not capitalism true. it's right that's crazy wow. i know all right so now we did put out polls for this episode um and so the first poll that we're gonna do is we just basically asked y'all, have you ever been in an open relationship before? So 81% of y'all said no, and 19% said yes, you have been in an open relationship. So obviously, way more of you have not. Um, Mm. But it's cool because I have faith that there are listeners out there that have. So yeah, I mean, it kind of lines up with how we talked about monogamy being like the quote unquote norm or like accepted whatever in society. Like, I think there's still a big ass stigma. Right. Um, and I mean, I haven't done it. So, yeah. You know. um, but the yeah. next one is if you haven't, would you ever explore it? And majority still 62 percent said no. But 24% said yes and 14% said maybe. So we've got like a 60-40 on the no, yes, slash maybe. And I think a lot of people, it's really just like more education about it. Like I've always been interested in it because I remember in high school, I read this book. It was like a fiction book, but it was, they were in like a, like non-monogamous relationship and it was like queer too. Like I forget the name, but like this person was was like a shadow. Yeah. Like in high school. Yeah. Because the person like in the book was like genderless like they didn't it, I don't know how to explain it I, I wish I remember the name of the book but it was a Sounds pretty popular good, book honestly. it was a young adult one yeah I'm trying to read it right so I remember like thinking about that and one of my friends at the time Jake who you know like we had talked about like he's super smart and like we had talked about it whatever so then when I met you and you were doing it I was like oh this is cool but you were the first person I knew that I think that had really was like practicing it <laughs> but I'm definitely like open to it. Not right. all types, but certain types. But I do think it's really about the person. And like you do have to educate yourself a lot. You do have to educate yourself at all, a lot. It's 100% about the person. 
Um, and yeah, I think it's just like, I think for me, it's like, it'll just align. I don't think it's something that I need in my next relationship. But I feel like if I do meet someone who is into open relationships, it'll kind of like confirm, okay, yeah, like this is, you know, so I'm yeah. down for either. Like, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? But speaking of the stigma, Fiji, which you Ooh. just brought up, great transition. I do want to talk a little bit about the stigma, not of polyamory and open relationships, but the stigma of like being jealous within mm. an open relationship. And also a little bit, is it normal to be jealous in an open relationship? Because everyone right. thinks, like, you're in an open relationship, like, you're cool, right? Like, we're all cool. Like, no one's jealous about anything. Like, that's why you guys are in that open relationship. You're so yeah. evolved. Yeah, and I feel like that's one of the biggest arguments against it or when people talk about why they wouldn't do it. They're always like, oh, well, I would just get too jealous. Like, as if people who are in them just don't. <laughs> right, and, like, there's this stigma that it's like, you need to get over jealousy and move past all jealousy feelings in order to be successful right. in an open relationship. And it's simply not true, my friends. It's yeah. really not. And I'm guilty of this because I kind of thought the same. I was like, my first relationship being open, I was like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to do this. Like, I'm the most jealous bitch alive, bro. And I definitely was very jealous you're during very that. Territori- you're very territorial. I feel like you're more territorial versus jealous. Because, like, with friends, too. And, like, yeah. that's tracked. Like, through high yes. school, like, not just you. Like, it's I'll never it's forget tracked. one time we were at Explore Tour, and I think I was, like, talking to one of our friends more than you. <laughs> and Autumn literally got so mad at me. But, like, valid. Like, you know you're number one. Like Wait, but what the fuck? I don't remember that. But I 100% believe it. was believe with it. Gigi. We were there, like, in the middle of the oh, day. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I was low-key a little And I remember you just, like, went outside to smoke a cigarette with mad attitude. And I was like, bro, bro, because why were we? Oh, my God. Yeah. So example. Yes, that is how I am. So it's like I really thought I was like, yeah, there's no fucking way. And it's also just like I wanted to say, too, like it can build up a lot of guilt, like feeling jealous in these open relationships. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like worse because you're like feeling jealousy but it's like you're not really supposed to because you're in this evolved, like somewhat taboo right. type of relationship. So I always just felt like I'm doing polyamory wrong. I'm doing open relationships wrong because I'm still having breakdowns about my partner communicating that she hooked up with someone last night or and so I would feel like I like wasn't like worthy of doing openness, like yeah. to get deep. But it's like that's how I felt because I just felt like. It's normal to get jealous in monogamous relationships because you're closed off from everyone. You can right. only fuck each other. But in open relationships, it's like, yeah, but you chose to do that. So, like, why would you, like, make yourself want to be jealous? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but I do think it is, like, even how we were talking about before, I almost, like, kind of disagree with, like, the video you were talking about where they were saying don't use the word jealousy, use like yep. anger, sadness, whatever, because I of feel course like you do. for me it's almost the opposite where it's like I'll get angry manic. Like I remember recently I got <laughs> angry manic about a person I'm not even fucking with anymore because a bitch commented on his picture and I literally had to take yeah, a walk you- <laughs> and go get a bottle of wine and like whatever. But I'm like angry about it, like so pissed off. But if I got to the root of it, it's jealousy and it's insecurity. And I feel like it's better for me to label that because I'm like, okay, like I'm not angry. I'm jealous and it's okay to be jealous, but like I can get over that. But that's just me. I don't know for everybody. That's that's just you. Right. And I feel like it's because you're not like looking at jealousy as like how a lot of people look at it, which is like the worst thing ever, you know, and I kind of look at it like that. Like I personally like I'm fine to never use that word again because I think I really use it when I know that it's not really jealousy. It's something else. It's insecurity too. Right. And it's like I was in my open relationships like knowing that and like knowing that this jealousy like it's not really jealousy because when I think about her like fucking someone else like yeah it makes me a little uneasy but what makes me more uneasy is the fact that she might be fucking her better than I could or she looks better on top of her than I do but isn't that jealousy 
it's like it's jealousy, but it's more like I'm just not like I'm not comfortable with where I'm at in my life. I'm not secure right. with who I am. Right. So I don't even think that it, I am jealous of that bitch. I think I'm jealous of the fact that like, you know, she's able to like just be sexy and free and I'm not like, I don't know. Yeah. See, I think I think that's the thing, because I would still look at that as jealousy, but I would think of the healing for that as building your confidence and healing right. your insecurity. Right. But right. it's like whatever. Works either for way. You. But it's like yeah. either way, like definitely like with open relationships, I feel like both people in them sometimes or people outside of it think that you have to reach this point of like godlike ascension where you just don't feel any attachment or anything towards anyone and that's not true when you're in intimate relationships of course you're going to feel attached and you're going to be a little bit triggered some abandonment moons are going to come up some stuff right you know like it's normal and like that brings it into it like is feeling jealous in open relationships normal and like I think it definitely is. Jealousy is a human emotion. Just because you're in an open relationship doesn't mean jealousy isn't there. I would say it's like it's it's talked about so much. Like me yeah. and my partner would talk about, you know what I mean? Like it's like we were always talking about it. And so that same YouTube video, Flavor of Truth or whatever, they basically said having jealousy occasionally is normal. Having jealousy too much and not communicating about it mm. is problematic it's the problems underneath the jealousy that can end up be so damaging the key is to understand jealousy and you will be able to put that guilt behind you so I don't know because I think when I was in my open relationship like I was having jealousy a lot and I was communicating it probably like 75 percent like a good amount I don't think it's bad to be like jealous a lot if you know that like you're if you're doing the work of where it's coming from and you're communicating with your partner. Like I feel like it's like because, yeah, I just I felt so much shame about like feeling jealous about certain things. And I really don't think it's like as harmful as everyone makes it seem like if you are communicating it and you have like a healthy partner, you know, like it's not the end of the world. Like. Right, because part of me feels like, and it's like, I've never been in an open relationship, so I don't really know. Like, it's easier for me to, like, romanticize it and think that, like, it's better because I've only ever been in monogamous relationships. But, like, I think in a monogamous relationships, a lot of times you, like you said, you know what jealousy is or you have these certain, like, codes of what monogamy is. So you just completely ignore jealousy. Or if one person gets jealous, it's like, oh, how could you accuse me of cheating? I'm not cheating. And that's not even what it is sometimes. It's just the person feels like insecure or whatever and they need to talk it out with their partner. They need to do the inner work versus in like healthy polyamory relationships. Like sometimes there's more of like a conversation about it where it's like, okay, like if you feel weird about the fact I just told you I hooked up with someone take your space that's normal but if you want to talk like I'm here like unless it gets to a point too much where they're like so not okay with it then it's like you shouldn't be together right like that type of feeling both of you can relate to because you know you're seeing each other as whole human beings that have different attractions and different relationships outside of just this like cult of monogamy right and I remember with my first partner and we were in an open relationship they wanted me to tell them like everything I did with someone else that was like sexual or romantic or like whatever it is. So I remember like literally I was like about to get on the orange line in Boston. I was like on the phone with them. And I was like, yeah, so like I hooked up with someone last night. It was the same night you had your first lesbian sex experience. I was telling them about this moment and I was like, yeah, I was like, you actually know her and like this is what happened. Like I don't I wasn't even that into it. But like, yeah. And I remember them being just like, Like, okay, like, I, like, okay, thank you for telling me. Like, I do want to take space. And then they didn't talk to me for, like, 14 hours. But they weren't mad. They were just, like, but I'm just, like, and then I I remember being, like, damn, so why are we doing this to ourselves? Like, why why are we making each other sad? Like, is it really worth it? But it's like they were the ones See, that I don't were think pressing. It's sad though. Because like that's how I cope with shit. Like, even and I feel like it's caused me issues in relationships or whatever. But like if something upsets me, like I know how angry I can get and how like manic and how like whatever. And the last thing I want to do is take it out on someone. So the healthiest thing for me to do would be to take space. 
And for you, it's probably like, oh my God, they're abandoning me because like, I want to feel like I like, isn't the whole point that I can tell you and you still love me. Right. But people deal with it in different ways. Like, I so, know. You know, it's, it, but cause I can, and understand. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, so now like I'm getting like punished and we can't talk right. anymore because I did what you want me to do and be in this yeah. fucking open. Like, because I just, I was, I mean, I was not ready back then. This right. was like, Having an open relationship as your first relationship is fucking crazy after growing up in a society like this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's fucking weird. And I did it. I wasn't the one that proposed the idea. I was the one foolishly in love and didn't, like, I was right. like, okay. And you, right. Like, they were way more experienced. You were like, I thought this is how it's supposed to go. Like, what the fuck? Like. Right. Yeah. But it's, yeah. So, but at, to bring it all back, jealousy is very normal. OK, and as long as you talk about it, like you're good, like we don't need to demonize it that bad. Like we don't need to demonize it that bad. Like it doesn't mean you have zero self-respect. Like it's not right. that deep, like depending, you know, but I do want to get into our next poll because we asked y'all, do you think jealousy comes up more often in open relationships than in monogamous relationships? Mm. Juicy question. Am I right? Mm. And 63% of y'all said yes, and 37% of y'all said no. Um, and in terms of do you think jealousy comes up more often in open relationships than monogamous relationships, I think we kind of meant like, like, is there more conversations about jealousy or are people getting jealous more? And both yeah. of those are like, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Um, but I would say... I would say yes, but maybe in like a healthier way than I think y'all might have been thinking because I think people think about open relationships. It's like, fuck yeah, there'd be more jealousy. Like you're fucking whoever you want, like blah, blah, blah. But it's not really like that. You're not really fucking whoever you want. Like you do have like, you know, like it's it's not as much of a free for all as like right. people think it is. But I think... Jealousy does come up more in open relationships only because it's so important to like communicate boundaries and what you're cool with and what you're not cool with. So I think yes, but in a healthy way. I think okay. monogamous couples be getting jealous over the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Right. So that's why I read the question differently, honestly. Like when I thought like. Right. It's all for more. interpretation. Yeah. Because I was thinking more like comes up emotion wise. Right. And so I voted no. But I right. think the conversation happens more definitely. Right. But I think that it's healthier because like, I mean, I don't, like I've like I said, just monogamous relationships. But like I've been with partners that have cheated on me before or like hid things. And that, and like I said, like how I deal with things I think is separating myself. And I also can get into these manic, like super emotional, like whatever, like obsessed with like stalking this bitch's profile to figure out what the fuck was happening and da 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 da. But like for me, I think it's a control thing where it's like, I just want to know what's happening. And if I know what's happening, I can deal with it because mm -hmm. I can like make peace with it. And it's part of like, you know, detach bitch, whatever. You don't always need to know what's going on. Get out of the fucking relationship. But right. the part that appeals to me about non-monogamy is that you either have like this, okay, we discussed, it's don't ask, don't tell, so I can let go of it. Or we discussed, they're going to tell me, so I just need to trust that they're going to tell me or like whatever. So right. I like that whole conversation thing because for me as a person that I think like likes to have control or likes to like box my emotions and like place them so I can that's deal a with turn them. on to you about it yeah that that's what makes it like okay like this seems more structured than right. monogamy in a weird way because monogamy like as much as we're like oh yeah just one person it's so vague like is liking someone story cheating is sticking your is having a quick banter at a bar with someone and then right. never seeing them again cheating like I don't know but with polyamory and open relationships you have to have those conversations so you know do you think like if there wasn't such a stigma on open relationships of it being like because I think there is a stigma of it being almost like a stressful situation to put yourself in. I mean, I definitely thought it was when I first did it for the first time. I was like, I often had thoughts, why am I doing this to myself? Like, this hurts a lot. Yeah. But granted, I was 19 and 10 times more insecure than I am now. And I still wouldn't call myself the most secure person. But back then, whoo, baby, like I was like, you know what I mean? So back to my question, do you think 
that like if there wasn't that stigma and like people didn't think a certain way that they think about open relationships, you'd be more inclined to try? Or do you feel like it's like more of like a loyalty thing? Like you feel like me personally? Want? Yeah, I'm asking you. Because yeah. I, I have proposed it before. Like my right. ex that lived in London, like we were going to be in different countries in different time zones, like six hours apart. And I said, Hello. like, I didn't like, honestly, me, like I do say all the time, like I'm a very loyal person and that like, I feel like when I have a partner, like I just want to be with them, but I'm also like a flirty person. Like if I go out, like I'll probably be flirty, but like in terms of like having sex and stuff like that, not as much, but I was thinking about it more in terms of him and also just distance is hard. And I didn't want to ruin our relationship over the fact that we couldn't have sex for six months or longer at a time. So like I had proposed it and he was like, no, 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 I don't want to do this. Da, 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 da. And then he ended up cheating on me. So like I I'm for it. And like, even with my last situationship, like I, I thought like a don't ask, don't tell thing would have worked better. Like we weren't necessarily like committed, like whatever, like I'm still very open to it, but I think I like more of the type of open relationship where it's like, I'm probably not going to be out here fucking whoever, right. but I want like the um, ability to like flirt with whoever and like that kind of stuff. And that's what's so interesting too, because like, I feel like for me too, it's been like, I feel like I was doing less than my partner was. Like my partner is maybe having more sexual experiences or whatever, like flirting with more people. But I, I, and I felt like that ride or die shit where I was like, I genuinely didn't want to fuck anyone else. I was so like obsessed with fucking them. But I liked that I could. Like right. sometimes that's enough for people. It doesn't nest and that's the stigma. It's like people think you're in an open relationship. It's like a fuck, fuck, fuck. It's really horny people. They're fucking all the time. But like for me and for a lot of other people, it's like just the peace of knowing that I right. could if I wanted to is like enough. It like, feels you know? freeing. Because right. it, like Hello? to think that like you could have a night out and accidentally like not accidentally, but like do this one thing or whatever. And then you're ruining like the three years that you built with this person. It's like an insane thing. Like we demonize cheating so much and like all this stuff. And obviously trust is important. Like I'm not saying cheating is like a light thing. Right. But Cause it's not right. But the other thing I was going to say, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're talking more about your relationship with the man, right? Because when you were with the first one, the girlfriend, I think that you kind of sought out sexual relationships to fill a void and feel like, oh, I'm Why are you gonna... like, uh, we don't have to talk about it. But like, and that's you know? the thing, though. I was a lot of that was like on purpose. I was trying to train myself to kind of care less. I was training right. myself to be open to more than one person at once because right. I was so conditioned like that's a big no, no. But it's like arguably like that's I was breaking a boundary because if you don't really want to fuck someone and you're just doing it to like, you know, but I think with my first partner, they had like more romantic shit with other people. I didn't have any with my boyfriend, with my ex-boyfriend, same thing. I didn't have any romantic and he for sure did. Like he's a fucking liar. So like, because our boundary was, like, to just do sex, not romance shit. And then, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and so I feel like, yes, but you're right. Like, I think, but I really think with my first partner, I was, like, seeking out those experiences to try to, like, make myself more equipped to be a better poly person. And and I feel like I did that with my ex, my, like, most recent, like, long-term ex that was cheating on me and, like, all this stuff because, like, so much of our relationship was on and off. So, like, we would end things. I would be pissed because I just found out about some shit. Like, whatever. I'm manic. Right. I'm angry. I go out. I fuck someone that I don't really want to fuck. But I need to feel like I'm a bad bitch. And I need to feel like I can do whatever I want. And I can, you know, do better than you. And, like, right. that's not healthy because it's it's not it's healthy not- for you either. Like, as a person, like, it's it's not filling any void. It's making the void bigger. Yeah. You know? And I think on some toxic shit, too, like, I remember, like, because, like, when me and my first partner started this open relationship, we were in Europe for, like, two and a half months living together. Mm -hmm. So our kind of thing was also, like, if we're together, like, we're not flirting with other people right in front of each other. 
Right. And we were together 24-7 because we were traveling. (laughs) Yeah. And then when we got back to Boston or whatever, that's when it's like, okay, the poly really going to start now. Yeah. Because now we're in different cities too. Well, at first they were still in Boston though. At first, before they moved to New York, we were both in Boston. I remember I was at the restaurant we both used to work at and they called me during a shift, bro. To tell me, like, I just want you to know, like, I hooked up with someone last night because that was our... Okay, that, that, because Loki just, before you finish the rest of the story, I had a friend do this to me recently. It was, it was not recently. It was a few months ago, but they were seeing someone and they had done something bad and they were like, I'm going to go tell them what should I do, da, da, da. And that, their person was at work. And I was like, do not tell them right now. Like, timing, guys, like, timing Is is so important. So important. Anyway, go on. I was, and I got really mad at them for that. Like, I was like, are you fucking, I was hostessing. I was the face of the restaurant. (laughs) I cannot be crying right now. I was in the bathroom like, oh, what's up? Like, thinking something happened. It's so important. You have to call me right the fuck now. And I think, because initially our agreement was we are going to tell each other, right? Because that was so important to them that I did. I was like, you know what? Like, let's just have it be equal then. Like, I want, like, you know. And then after that day, I remember on the phone being like, thanks for telling me. But, like, my new boundary is I don't want to know. So I never want this to happen again. And then they ended up, like, feeling really bad. Like, the timing was bad. But for them, it was, like, an anxious thing. Like, they had to tell me. they felt like not being secure. They felt like they were cheating, like, before, like, they had to tell me. And I think ultimately that's why they didn't work. I think that person, like, they really need someone that's, like, gonna have it all out there. Like, I think a big reason why we didn't work is because I was telling them what I was doing. But I didn't allow them to tell me what they were doing. Yeah. And then ultimately we broke up because they had to tell me they they were were hiding part of their life. And like, and I get that because it like, I don't know. That's why they were like, that's not Polly to me because I'm hiding it. But it's like to them, right? You know, it's like that doesn't make you feel. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's like, because the part that I like about the poly shit is like, I'm recognizing that you're this whole other person that has these other experiences and I can still love you and know that like our connection is still solid, even if you make out with someone else. Like, I like that fact, but like the thought of knowing and just like knowing my impulses, like I'm going to want to look that person up on Instagram. Like I know I'm going to be paranoid. Like I'm going to look at the yeah. stories like that shit. It's like more of a, like you, you have to deal with that. And it's a self-control thing. And I think it still happens in monogamous relationships, but like open relationships really challenge you in that way to yeah. be like, cause you're re- unlearning everything you've been brought up with. Like, and I think my ex-boyfriend and I, I liked it better in the sense that we both were, he was very like, I definitely don't want to fucking know what you right. do with another. Like he, and I felt the same way. And our boundary was like, if it comes something romantic, that you have feelings. I like from the beginning, I told him I was like, the boundary is if you start to feel romantic, you have feelings. I need you to tell me. Mm-hmm. And when you do tell me, know that I'm going to leave immediately once right. you tell me. But see, that's and that's how we just, ended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you but know what I mean? At least he did. Like, And I stuck to my boundary and I actually did leave because right. at the beginning he was still trying to have me be a side piece, like whatever. And I was like, no, like I thought I was the main one. Like what the fuck happened? So. It's, but I think I liked that dynamic better of the don't ask, don't tell. And it's just whatever works for you. Yeah. But yeah, when you were saying like he wanted you to be a side bitch type shit, that reminded me also of my ex because like it was so weird in the sense where I had also with him at one point early brought up that maybe we should be open because he I was remember. like, oh, like I just think, you know, I want multiple bitches. Ah, da, da, da. Like he was trying to make me a side bitch. And I was like, that's not fair. And I'm never doing that. Even if I wasn't going to hook up with other people, like I'm like, no. And then that's what I think caused him to be so insanely jealous throughout our relationship. But it's just like so weird. And I feel like a big thing with men is that they want to have multiple bitches and side bitches and they want you to be loyal to them, but them not to be loyal to you. And that's why it's like, it's just like if more people learned about this, I think men could because I can respect a man who's like, no, you know, I want multiple bitches. And I'm like, OK, you know yourself, you know what you're 
don't ask, don't tell is, you know what, whatever. And I can respect that more. At least you follow it, even if I'm not happy with it versus right. you being mad at me for bringing it up when you're like doing it, but in a non-ethical way, you know? Right. And that's why I always joke to say with my ex-boyfriend, like we weren't open, like you were just trying to control me because like he would joke, like I can only fuck bitches. I can't fuck other men. But I didn't listen to that. Right. I didn't. But I also, you know, so did I, you, you know did. what I mean? I mean, cause you. Like the strip club doesn't count though. But like when you came to, did you Oh break yeah. Up? Yeah. I did. And I and then like we broke maybe, up five right, days later. Right. That was like the only time. And right at the beginning when I was living like in a different part of L.A., I like fucked the neighbor. But his dick was so small. I remember. That was horrible. That was I was like, and And then that's that's the see, that's why I get so mad. I couldn't even feel that shit in my doorman. Because I'm like, I, then you have to walk by their place. You can't, like, be Fuck home. that. You can't fuck your neighbor. He was, like, friends with my neighbor, though. So it was, like, a okay. little bit better. But he still lived really close by. But anyways, yeah. So that's, you know, a man trying to control you and have mad bitches and, like, be low-key about it is not open, no. you know? So let's just get that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we should just do our last poll. Do you want to read it? You can read it. Sure. So our next poll is what's the biggest reason people tend to feel jealous in open relationships? Dun, dun, and, the, dun. and the one that won was they're not doing what they truly want to in life at 42%. Ding, ding, ding. Right. And then at 29%, their partner is hooking up with too many people. Wah, at wah, 25%, wah. if it's healthy, there won't be any jealousy. And for only 4% they're insecure. And I'm honestly surprised <laughs> about this because I get there, like, it makes sense. Like talking to you and like your experiences, I'm like, duh, I should think it's because they're not doing what they really want to in life because a lot of them are one-sided. Like one person falls in love with another person and tries to mold themselves to be like this. Right. Ish, you know, but I voted for, If it's healthy, there won't be any jealousy. And then the one I would have voted for otherwise is because they're insecure. The if if it's healthy, there won't be any jealousy. I don't think anything's ever pissed me off more. That's so false. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. But I I wasn't looking at it as in like there won't be any jealousy. Okay, maybe it's just I'm associating jealousy with like the toxic anger mania that you're not dealing with. Because I do think that there will be jealousy. There's always going to be jealousy. Thank you. Right. But the healthy part threw me off. Okay. And so That's I think fine. I'm just like interpreting it differently. But I do think if not that one, then it's because they're insecure. Because like, I don't know. I feel and like the is- root of jealousy is insecurity and it's a self thing. And, and I definitely, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think. And we'll get into this a little later in the episode, but there's positive jealousy that can be inspiring and negative jealousy that can be Mm. like uh, earth shatteringly sad. Yeah. So I get it. But I do think when you're thinking about open relationships specifically, because remember, like these these people like not are they elevated in the sense where they can't feel jealousy and they're perfect in relationships, but they If you're going to be in an open relationship, you have to know that like jealousy, bare bones is like insecurity. So it's assuming that they've moved past those insecurities and now it's like they're not really jealous or down on themselves. They just have like too much time on their hands and they're not like doing what they're supposed to be doing in their life. So they're thinking of like dumb reasons to get jealous. Okay. But it's but it's all about interpretation. Okay, okay. See, I was looking at it as in they're not doing what they want to in life, as in like open relationships aren't for them. Oh no. Like they should be doing monogamy. Oh no. So I was reading the question way different. I was thinking, like, if it's healthy, then you're having the conversation, you're doing the work with yourself, and you're not gonna have any jealousy right so yeah, maybe no. yeah we just that's not how i i i 
Yeah, I should. But I mean, everyone agrees with you. So right, I was, I was like, interpreting pop it wrong. off. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was just you that didn't get it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but essentially, I did kind of get this like inspiration from this other YouTube video I watched that we will link down below. Why are you feeling jealous in open relationships? And they're the ones that talked about you're envious, you're jealous because you're not living your truth. You don't have enough going on, whereas that you are worried about this little mundane shit. Right. And it's you the know? same in monogamy a lot of times. Right. Or your partner cheated in the past and like you have abandonment wounds. Whatever. But a lot of times, a lot of that shit comes from yourself. Right. At the end of the day, always. So. Um, there's also this well-known YouTuber called Polly. <laughs> there's also, there's also this well-known YouTuber called Polly Am Fam. Okay. This man <laughs> has a lot funny. of subscribers. But anyways, he had like kind of a basic video just about like tips on how to like get over jealousy in open relationships. And the ones that I liked were the following. The first one is jealousy comes from fear of the unknown. So you need to ask questions. And this is like when you're setting your open relationship, you're declaring boundaries. It's like, okay, like if you say you're going on a date with someone, what does that mean? Does that mean you're going to go get drinks and then it's over? Does that mean drinks and then a walk and then a fuck? Like what does that mean and what are the expectations? But it's even more important to know that it's like ever evolving Like, yes, the expectation could be that we just, you know, do this and that and the other thing. But then you meet someone, you really hit it off and then it becomes a little bit bigger. And it's like you have to decide if you're okay with that or it's like, no, if you cross the line, then you're cheating. So it's just like communication is everything when it comes to jealousy. Like it's literally everything. And I think just the mere act of saying it out loud will help you understand and like put it into perspective like it's not as big of a deal as maybe you think it is right it kind of reminds me of like I think I was talking to this with the lo- about this with the last guy I was with but like relationships are really like businesses and especially like marriages and shit where it's like you kind of and I feel like my whole life I've been so opposed to structure blah 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 but I realize that I need structure to like be free and to be able to grow and I feel like having those kind of like you could play a little what if game with your partner if you're in an For open funsies. relationship yeah and write it down you know with the objective That this is what we're following, but things might change and things might need clarification. Like, it's just like me and you having the podcast. Like, okay, you used to post this shit on this day and I used to post this shit. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes we switch. We communicate. Life is life. But if you're just, you leave everything open, then it's like, hey, Autumn, we're in a relationship. I'm going on a date. Now you're going to have a fucking mental breakdown because we never defined what a date is. And like a festering grudge that will start to fume. That's a Sims reference if you guys know the Sims. But anyways, it's like literally that's what will happen. And it's like I really think that there's been times where I've communicated to my partner that I was jealous and I felt so much better. It was a great convo. Mm -hmm. And then there's times that I felt 10 times motherfucking the motherfucker. Right. Because they, they tweak out. And so much of it is time. Or they just say, like, they are changing the boundary. It's ever evolving, and I don't like it anymore. Yeah. And I'm now upset. And you have, it's just, like, going into it. That's why everyone's like, oh, like, open relationships. Like, it's a free-for-all. Guys are like, oh, yeah, that's lit. You can just fuck whoever. But it's like, no, no, dude. Like, it's actually so much work. Like, and arguably monogamists should have these conversations, too. But they don't. You know what I mean? And it's like non-monogamy, you're fucking forced to. Otherwise, it's like, what are we doing? And that's why I feel like, honestly, none of my relationships have ever worked out. Because, like, I take relationships very seriously. And I hold them, like, down to the people that I love. Like, I'm very loyal. I'm very fucking ride or die. But, like, as much as I say all the time, like, oh, like, emotions make me uncomfortable. Like, I'm detached. Like, I don't want to have conversations about certain shit. That's in the beginning. And that's when I don't feel safe and comfortable. But, like, genuinely, if I, like, love a person and if we're building a relationship, I want to have a lot of those uncomfortable conversations. And I think that they're important. But, like, so many people, it's like you bring up, even in monogamy, something that's bordering on something you 
don't realize or some how do I phrase this bordering on something that goes against monogamy or bordering on something that your relationship is in danger you're gonna break up this person's gonna cheat when it's not it's really like a foundation in securing your relationship and making you more safe and then communication breaks down and you feel like you can't communicate right and I've had that happen so many times in monogamous relationships where I'm like I'm trying to be like not just that I want to go fuck other people, but I see you as a whole person and I don't think you're fulfilled either. So like, let's figure this out right, together. Right. And that, and those, these conversations and these quote unquote relationship check-ins about boundaries, what it does is it does not allow room for you to like bottle shit down because there was right. times with my ex-boyfriend where we went months without having a relationship check-in about what the fuck. And it's like, then it's like just the conversation starter. I'm already in fucking tears, bro. You're because you apart. have, you have to do it consistently. Like you have to, otherwise it's just like you get so far off track and it's like, I think we were killing it, me and my ex-boyfriend with communication at the beginning. And I think it fell off and like he was keeping things from me and that's, you know, we, it, it didn't work out. Right. So as like annoying as it might be sometimes because it's not always fun conversations to have like at the end of the day it is like just like fueling your relationship to last longer and that's yeah. what you want so it's good and it's so cringely healthy like it right. really feel like cringely. honestly if I had a partner that tried to do that with me I would You'd probably be like, uh -huh. run away I would wet. probably run away because I always oh run. no I would run away are you kidding me I just talked about how this guy has his whole life together and I'm like and you're I like not do down it. yeah I forgot because I'm I used forgot. to being the person that has it together and the other person doesn't but right yeah yeah and then another tip from this video the last one I want to share is just to like continuously ask yourself why in order to mm. dig deep on where the jealousy is actually coming from this is an example created and written creatively by me why am I jealous of my partner's other lover? And then it's like, because she's bad as fuck. And then it's like, why am I jealous that she's bad as fuck? And it's like, because I don't feel bad as fuck. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you just keep going down, down, down the rabbit hole and you figure it out. Because again, it takes perspective out of it. It's not really about this other bitch. It's about you, bro. Right. And the solution to that would not be to go to your partner and be like, I'm not feeling bad as fuck. Make me feel bad as fuck. The solution would be go to a dance class, go put makeup on, go out to brunch with your friends, go do something away from the relationship that reminds you that you're dope outside of this relationship. Like that's right. what the solution would be. Or and that is about fucking it. good advice, bitch. Right? Away from the relationship. Don't go take a cute photo shoot and post it and be like, aren't we the shit? I mean, like a little bit. Cause like, honestly, that petty spiteful shit, like I'll do it in like a classy way. You feel me? Cause sometimes taking a, a hot photo shoot will make you feel bad as fuck. Do you right. want to make your partner a little jealous? Sure. I don't know. I don't know about that actually. But one thing I will say that has helped me with this when I was in my toxic relationship and I was trying to just unlearn attachment to a lot of things and like his decisions and like keeping solid in myself is like that on purpose podcast with Jay Shetty because he pulls a lot of things from like monk culture or like Buddhism and like religion and so much of it is about like detachment and meditating and like going into yourself and just realizing that like you don't have attachment to anything really you know so that like I grew up very in religion and I'm not even really spiritual now but like when I do feel like the best way I cope with stuff it's when I meditate and I kind of just like go into myself and realize that nothing really fucking matters and I'm still alive and I'm still breathing and it's fine you know right right and that's how you get over jealousy too right <laughs> exactly so but no seriously though because it's about it's about you it's not about the other people and sometimes putting the focus on the other people like makes you feel a little bit better. It makes you feel a little bit more rage than sad. But it's like, it's you're just, you need to get over it quickly. So we need to get to the root of the problem. Right. Um. So now I want to talk a little bit about that positive jealousy versus negative jealousy. 
So this couple, Connor and Brittany on YouTube, they've been in an open poly relationship for over like seven years. And they essentially have a literal like how to heal your jealousy and open relationships like program. And they like help people through that, like whatever. So essentially when uh, they had this video called, will I always be jealous in my open relationships? Like, can we ever get past this? Or is this like an ongoing thing we're going to have to talk about for the rest of time? So in their video, they essentially tell the viewers to be curious Mm -hmm. about your jealousy, not like shameful about it. And that was my biggest struggle in mine is I felt so much shame about it. So it's like, you don't want to force your jealousy away. They say, let's get intimate with it. That's what they use. Get intimate with your jealousy. And that's literally kind of what we're... Like role play it? Like, no. Like, just get, like, really close and, like, clear on, like, why you're feeling jealousy. Just, like, really go in. Be intimate with the emotion itself. Okay. Um, And see what it has to offer you. They said, like, what is this really trying to tell us? You know, it can be really scary You have to learn uh, so much about self-responsibility, like in these open relationships, like what's on me about why am I being jealous? It's not just because they did this action. It's like I feel a certain way because I'm not elevating my self-worth or I'm not practicing self-love, like whatever it might be. So for positive jealousy, instead of saying like, I want to change because, so say like you're, you're a man, you're in an open relationship, And he fucks like a really bad bitch tells you about it instead of saying like, you know, you got to that point in which you're like, I'm not jealous of that. I'm jealous because she's so hot. Mm -hmm. So instead of telling yourself like, okay, like I want to change because I lack that BBL body type that I want and she has it and I'm jealous and I want it, whatever you can say, I want to change because I am inspired to do so. So it's like taking this jealousy like, Maybe not criticizing yourself and why you don't look a certain way, but rather this jealousy could inspire you in a positive way to to get a BBL to prioritize your body. Like, I don't know. OK, That's because what they in said. a way I get it in a way because it's like you can appreciate the bad bitch and you can be like, she's a bad bitch. You know what? I don't hate her because I'm jealous of her. I love her because she's got a BBL and she's hot and she's rocking that. And if we met in a bathroom bar, bar bathroom, we would probably be friends. Cool. But like the inspired thing, like uh, inspired like you it in terms might of be like a women, the women saw like women inspire me, but like inspire me to get a BBL. I don't know. Well, maybe it was that. a bad example that I created. No, I don't think it is though. Cause I feel like it's the same if like. Oh, she's blonde and I'm not. Ne- let me and get it's a blonde like, wig. Like, I... Right, right. And then what they say about negative jealousy, it's like when you feel those, like, I, like, I'm worthless because I don't have a BBL. It's like, that's when you need to look deeper and it's insecure and worthless. But okay. essentially, they've been in this relationship and over seven years later, Brittany says that, like, you know, in the beginning, Brittany and Connor, those are their names. And Brittany was like, in the beginning, like, I used to get so jealous all the time with Connor would have new partners, like, consecutively, like, it would happen a lot frequently. And now, seven years later, she's like, I get excited because I know that when he has an abundance of love in his life, it makes him a better person. It makes the relationship more enjoyable for me. And it's good for everyone. So she jumped from being jealous to seven years later being like, oh, I get excited. Is she fucking other people? Yeah, she is. Okay, all right. Because if not, I was like, that sounds a little culty. But like, okay, that's, but that's what I think it should be. And I think that's good because like, same But getting excited is crazy. Like, I mean, okay with it? Like, yes and no. Because like, I feel like to me, a lot of times, like I try to put it in perspective of like, how would I treat my friend and my best friend's? And I feel like, like with me and you, like, I'm always like very open, like very excited, very forgiving, like very like whatever about whatever you want to do. I'm going to love you regardless. And I'm going to give you advice, like whatever. So it's like, if it's my partner, which is hard, I'm not saying I've always practiced this in the best way that has this new girlfriend, 
I could get angry about it or I could be like, oh, she's really helping him fucking make his music and he's happier because of that because he was looking for a producer or something like that. Like, you know, like me being jealous is actually detracting from his life and it's pulling us further apart in our relationship. Like it's self-destructive. Right. So, and I wouldn't do that to you. So why would I do that to someone I love in a different way? Yeah, I think comparing it to your friend is, like, so cool because I've never thought of that. Yeah. But it's so true. It's, like, why can't we – because – and it's, like, it would be a lie if it's, like, you have all these other friends in your life that, like, feed you. So it's, like, you don't need me to be do everything for you, you know? Right. And so it's, like, it's – you're able to be a better friend when you have more friends because you're more well-rounded. You can be more present, like, whatever – So it's like, it's the same for relationships. Right. Like, why is one, like in monogamy, it's like that one person's responsible to give you the love, the protection, the The comedy, the everything. (laughs) Right. And it's like, but for friends, it's like, we don't, like you have friends for all different things. So yeah. Right. And that's why I think it's half being solid in yourself. And even with monogamy, if you are going to be monogamous with this person, it's still like, I think a lot of your like happiness and self-worth still falls on yourself and also like the other relationships in your life. So like right. when those, but to me, I'm like, why do we, why is it okay if I'm in a monogamous relationship and I go get happiness by going to brunch with these bitches? Why is that less than me getting happiness by making out with someone for five minutes and then ghosting them? That doesn't equate to me because you know what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't make sense. But it's our society, I think. I it's think it's our the society. Way we it's yeah. because we learned that it's that's how it's supposed to be. But it's like if you break it down and, like, forget if they're a friend, they're a lover, they're a situationship, whatever. It's like how we want to treat people and what the abundance that we want for people. It should be be the same across parents, friends, relationships, like maybe not parents, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that's super. That's a really good point, babe. All right. So now that we've talked about all this shit, let's mm-hmm. bring it back a little bit. OK, let's circle back. Let's zone out. And let's talk about some psychology shit about where jealousy even fucking comes from. This was requested by Fiji. She wanted to know. And I'm here to serve, bitch. OK, mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about where jealousy comes from and then is it possible to unlearn it, which we already talked about a little bit. You know, our our friends, Connor and Brittany, they feel like they kind of did whatever. So basically, I got this from Psychology Tuesday. Our favorite. And it says research has linked several traits to greater jealousy. And I will list them. Mm. Number one, low self-esteem. Number two, neuroticism, (laughs) a general tendency to be moody, anxious, and emotionally unstable. Yup. Three, feelings of insecurity and possessiveness. Mm. Four, dependence on your partner. Even asking people to imagine that they don't have a good alternative partners leads to more negative reactions to hypothetical jealousy-inducing scenarios. Wait, what? What? Wait, even asking people... To imagine that they don't have alternative partners. Oh, so it's like hypothetically, if if I was a worm, like that type of shit, where it's like, okay, if okay. you met Nicki Minaj, would you fuck her? That type of shit. Yeah, so I was it's thinking like, more codependency. Right, like me how too. we used to be, and like how most of my relationships have been. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, bro. And then five is feelings of inadequacy in your relationship. So generally like that fear that you're not good enough for said partner, which, whoo, have I felt that? Jesus fucking Christ. Mm -hmm. And the last one is an intake. And the last one is an anxious attachment style, a chronic orientation toward romantic relationships that involves fear that your partner will leave you or won't love you enough. Research has shown that temporarily causing people to feel more securely attached by asking them to think about receiving support, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, okay, I wait, think that just real quick, I really think we should do an episode on anxious and avoidant attachment styles because it's so Ew. trendy on TikTok and like I we're going to do it anyway. Continue. But yeah, I think like overall, like 
<laughs> neuroticism's hilarious. Like this article <laughs> saying that neuroticism is a great link to jealousy. Yeah. But I guess it's like this list is like if you are these things, if you do these things, like you're more prone to be jealous, yeah. essentially. No, but I get that because like I don't know what my mental health is, you guys. Like, I know I have depression. I think I have ADHD. There could be some bipolar BPD in there. There's definitely substance abuse, addictive tendencies. But either way, I'm really fucking moody. And I know that, like, I'm like, like we were talking about earlier when we were on a little pause and shit. Like, intellectually, I understand so many things. And if you come to me in the right fucking moment, I'm... Perfect. I understand everything. If you come to me when I'm not in the right moment, I will be a raging cunt. And like Same. that is neuroticism. Yeah, I so, feel that. So we are neuroticism. So is it timing? That's why I'm like timing is so important. But I'm also like. But I'm it, not, is, it is though. It is. But it's also like when you're fucking with neurotic bitches like us, you also got to know that like the timing doesn't always matter because it could just be our timing. Bro, there was this, like, I was at Barnes & Noble the other day, like, and the, with my roommate, and there was this, like, baby toy, and it was, like, flashcards of different emotions, and my roommate's like, I'm going to buy this, so before I come home, you can put yours on the table, because literally. Yes, like, the stuffed animal that you can turn inside out. No, Bro. because I'm honestly, like, you're so it's so funny because I've always liked guys, not always, but like the last dude I was fucking with the situation ship and then my ex, both moody as fuck, like almost putting me to shame sometimes because, you know, I've gotten more healthy coping mechanisms because I know how I can be. But like, that kind of turns me on too. like, I love a neurotic person. I, don't I mean, know. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> But it's just interesting to kind of know. Like, they really break it down. But I feel like what's more interesting is, is it possible to unlearn jealousy? Mm. And I got this from polylife.com. It's actually a really cool site. Like, their article was good. And, like, I don't like reading articles. Like, and I thought it was really good. And we love that. And so I'm just going to, like, paraphrase it. But essentially, it was, like, to unlearn jealous behaviors, we have to unlearn generations of a blind acceptance mm. about what it means mm. to be in a human relationship. Mm. I was like, and they killed it. <laughs> I was like, that's so good. But it was like, the first step is to recognize and accept that fear goes hand in hand with jealousy. Accepting the fear means we no longer fear fear. Mm. We accept that feeling fear means that our brain is sending us a message about being under threat. <laughs> that's okay situation normal wait, wait, wait i know you like this article because this is how you type right <laughs> how you talk you're like i was like says, that's okay okay is in capital letters exclamation mark like that's kind of how you talk it's cute i like I'm it screaming. <laughs> but it's like yeah it's saying you know essentially to avoid the destruction that most often associated with jealous behaviors we need to wait for a report to come back from our thinking brain before we... Wait, what the fuck? Okay, yes. Yeah. See, this is what the fuck I'm saying. Because this is why bitches need 14 to 48 hours to talk to you again. Because I know my brain and it is psychotic. And based right. off of my trauma and based off of how this bitch is wired... I will tweak on your ass. And sometimes you just need to leave. Like sometimes right. you just need to leave me alone. So that's what it's saying. You got to wait till your brain because there's this whole other thing. I used to listen to this podcast. I wish I could remember the name of it, but it talked about like how like we have evolved as a society so much faster than our human bodies have. Like your brain interprets danger in the sense of like, oh my God, like there's an animal. Like I need to like protect myself. I need to protect my children. And your brain just reacts because at the end of the day, we're still fucking animals. We don't know, like our brains don't know and have not adapted to the fact that like we live in this like very privileged society where we don't experience that type of danger, like physical right. harm as much. So, so much of the time when we're experiencing that like quick trauma response, whatever, 
it's your brain like playing tricks on you and so that you got to like pull it down from like you're at a 10 we got to go to a two before you right we're jealous about an instagram picture we're not being chased by a lion right now type shit (laughs) exactly exactly right so okay okay so that makes sense so then they were like (laughs) so the change in our cognition goes something like this threat is felt fear Mm. is felt we think about what is valuable. Is it valuable? Are we focused on the right thing? Are we honest about what we're feeling? Can we communicate about it with respect and honesty to our partner? Can you overcome your immediate fears and meet the problem with respect? If we can, then when we practice and emulate what we want to feel, it will begin to become the new pattern of behavior your new default way of reacting to feeling things of jealousy. So it's like you're unlearning like what happens next. Like you feel jealous and then what happens? That's what you need to unlearn, like rephrase it in your brain, right? Yeah, and it's called thought work. Like, well, that's what I've heard it called. Like there's this, again, this podcast I used to listen to. I haven't listened to it in a while, but I can link it if I find it. But like thought work is essentially like using your thoughts and your thinking brain to talk yourself down from your bodily emotions. And I do it all the time, bitch. But that's why I seclude. Because if I didn't, I would be throwing things. Right. Right. Okay. And then they end it with what is the value that is threatened? Learning what is of real value to you is an eye-opening realization. When you decide that the person you love is what you value, instead of Mm. social expectations, status, reputation, feelings, or service they give you, It changes the conversation around the type of threat you feel. You create real and valuable connections with your partner that you both have a unique understanding of. I love that. Right? That is like beautiful because that's kind of what we were talking about with the friendship thing. And that's why I feel like it works with a lot of friendships because it's like, I mean, when you get sex involved and you have oxytocin and all this shit, like it makes it a little bit more complicated because there's more of those hormonal right brain shit going on but like yeah if you if you think about it like that like they said like a scale almost it makes it so easy I know and it's just like and again it's like intellectually yes love it beautiful and practice like this shit takes years bro to unlearn that just like it takes a lifetime to unlearn misogyny you know what I mean it's like All of these things are standards. Like, monogamy is like a fucking construct shit in our society, too. And that's why it's like, (laughs) with all this shit, I don't think we can ever reach this enlightened, miraculous place where we don't experience it. The best we can do is live a happier life and leave a better society for future generations. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to acknowledge it, acknowledge it. Like, Don't hide that shit because that's what happens in monogamous relationships. You feel jealous, but you don't say anything because you're ashamed of it, blah, blah, blah. That's just going to make you continuously be jealous, be jealous, because it's never really about that partner. It's more about you and how you feel. So it's just like, just, you know, like it's in, I feel like people are so afraid of like speaking out about jealousy because it is like cringy and it's giving self low self-worth and all that shit. Embarrassing. Yeah. But it's real. It's not though, because if we all just normalize it as a human thing that we experience, but also understand that like the way that we've been going about jealousy is kind of toxic and not self-serving or serving for anyone and try to like think about jealousy like this and like really right. dig deep like you bitches like to do inner child healing Your we need to do work. inner jealousy healing mm-hmm. because it's like especially if it's like cuz it's also like a it's a it's a trait on the sims too and it's a trait in real life I it's love like that. I get I, why you like the sims that I Dude, The Sims is literally a simulation of real life, bro. Like you can but make it. But it seems and I, a little healthier. At least they're labeling the emotions and being like. Yeah, no, my Sims are completely, they are fucking healed, booked, and busy. Like, I don't know. But um, what I was going to say is like, it's also like, oh, are you a jealous, are you the jealous type? 
And I think that's why there's a stigma that it's not normal because it's like either you're the jealous type or you're not. And my own mom has like said forever that she's not the jealous type. I'm like, the fuck does that even See, mean? See, because like, that ties it to identity. When you and say it's like bad like if that. you are je- you are the jealous type. But I think it's like okay if you're not jealous, go off. But like your trauma and insecurities will show up somewhere else in your life. Right. Like, you know, it's more about coping mechanisms because like. Saying you're right. the jealous type or saying you're not the jealous type, like that's tying it to your identity and your core of like a person versus being like, I've unlearned my jealousy or jealousy is not one of the, the emotions I struggle more with. For me, it's more like insecurity or like something else, you know? Yeah. Because once we realize everybody fucking like people feel certain different degrees based on how they were brought up or like their brain right. chemistry, whatever. And you don't have to compare yourself to other people, but like everyone is fighting their brains every day. Right. Every single day. And it does make me feel better to know that like jealousy is not just about being insecure. Right. Like there are more factors here, especially it's like when you talk about this whole like institutionalized system of monogamy, the Roman Catholic Church, it's like this is not like a unique experience. Like we all feel jealous and like think it's wrong to love more than one person because that's like the world that that's how it was originated, that it Mm -hmm. was wrong. So it's like, it's not just that we have low self-worth. It's also like an impossible battle. It's like, there's no way we could have been born like thinking differently about these things, you know, like it's just like, it is what it is. And if we all just do the work and, like, acknowledge it with each other, it'll be way better than it is right now. All right. So let's get into some listener stories, okay? This first listener said, coming from someone who has practiced poly since high school, I no longer believe it's good or healthy. I think poly people have attachment wounds Mm. and can't be alone with a surprised face emoji. And maybe this is something that, like, a lot of people think and, like, haven't, like, said. Like, I don't know. I've heard a lot of stigmas, but I haven't really heard this. But I think coming from someone that's actually done it and then has this realization, you mean, like, like that's real? You know what I mean? That's real. Yeah, and that's kind of similar to you a little bit. Right, because I – right when you said, yeah, it's like I can't tell that you're a little bit drunk. That was cute. Okay. Bitch. <laughs> um, I know it's like I but I've never thought that it was because people can't be alone. I've always I have always looked at it in a positive light where it's like it's people that understand that like you can't get all your love from one person and everyone's better off if we're able to like get different areas and have abundance and all of that. Um, But I believe that it might not be good or healthy for certain individuals. Maybe it's not good or healthy for me. You know? Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting because I never really thought of the like couldn't be alone thing. Like I associate that more with like monogamous people who have serial monogamous Like serial monogamous. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it definitely can be poly people too if they're always like, oh, like I need to have like a primary partner or multiple partners like because they can't sit alone with their emotions or work through their own shit. So they're constantly having these relationships with other people. Because right. they're never dealing with themselves. Like, I never really thought of that. But I think it can get there in some, like, forms and types of, like, poly relationships. And obviously, like, there are so many. And then there's so many types that maybe we don't even know about. Like, a specific set of boundaries that someone's doing. Yeah. But I definitely can see this. Like, if you are, like, always going on dates. Like, always one if you're not with your primary partner or with your secondary partner. You're not with them. You're with your third partner. Like, yeah, but you I, know, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, I can see how it could get there. Yeah, I will say, like, the one thing is, like, if you know it's not good for you and you've experienced it and you don't want it, like, completely get that, completely understand. But the one thing is since they said, like, since high school, like, pra- oh, OK, I thought they just practiced it in high school, but maybe they practiced it since high school, like out of high school, because I was going to say times. if it was just in high school relationships, like, you know, like you can obviously develop trauma from your high school relationships and then that can like impact the rest of your relationships. But I think like as you grow to be an adult, your relationships can be a lot different. And so like right. maybe give it a chance again. But if it's been like you've practiced it outside of high school as well, like while you were an adult and you still feel like it's not for you, like. Definitely, like, at least you can say you tried it 
and it's not for you, you know? Right. And then move on. It's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. This next one is kind of long. Okay. So this person said, two of my best friends are married and Polly, objectively happiest couple I know today and no doubt in their love and admiration for each other. I think any relationship, even Polly, has that monogamous window where you're solely dating each other and you have your time of admiration, connection, and honeymoon phase. But eventually you have the primal instinct and attraction for others. And not even sexually, I mean emotionally, intellectually, or spiritually. Not that I'm religious, but energy-wise. But I believe you have that person and best friend, but I don't see the problem in admiring other women or men you you too find attractive and embracing your instincts in sync rather than denying your urge. It's what makes us eventually feral and wanting to cheat. Like the poly couple who's married, they had their brick. They had their brick. Oh, brick. Okay, sorry, sorry. They had their brick on the pedal moment at first, but now they just date another couple and have no interest right now in others and think that's because they have the ability and freedom to see others if they wanted to. And that's my TED Talk. And I completely get this. And I think it's way more fucking common Than we think, especially with long-term couples and married couples. Like, I promise you, I know when I was in high school, it was like rumors going around. We were all like, hee hee, ha ha, oh my God. Because like some of the parents were rumored to be swingers. At my old jobs, there were definitely people I worked with that were rumored to be swingers. And that's, it's, sorry, it's this big stigma thing, but... Should it be? I don't know. Because we look at people who are swingers like, oh, there's definitely something wrong with their relationship or like, oh, they're just super horny and they need to get over themselves or they need to figure that out, like whatever. But it's usually monogamous people who are not happy in their relationships that are judging them. And like this person said, this couple was about to like end it. Like they were both not happy. And then they had this breakthrough of this could work for us. Right. And I'm like, because the swingers thing where it's like you switch and then it's like individual, y'all are fucking in separate bedrooms. I could never get with that. Really? But I have, no, no. Why? But because like, I, no, I, no, the answer is no. And I, but with my ex-boyfriend, it's like we would, I would fantasize about um, a really dumb lesbian fucking me and him fucking me also but they don't touch each other and he was down Mm. and so that's kind of like it's like we both find this person attractive and then we're gonna go after it together but I think at the end of this as well they said like the uh, they had the ability and freedom to do it if they wanted to which is something we touched upon a lot which is like really important for me that's like really what it is at the end of the day that appeals to me so much and like not just like Because I think it is like I remember specifically, like, even though it was hard for me in these open relationships, that was what was like, okay, well, it's really not that bad because I have this. Yeah. And I like the part that they said, um, like how you're you have this primal instinct and like you don't want to deny yourself of it. Instead, you're like accepting it. And I think that goes right. to like the stuff about the brain that we were talking about as much as jealousy is a thing. So is like um, validation and like flirting and like sexual turn ons and like all of that. But I also like how he said that um, they're objectively the happiest couple he knows and they're married. Like how many married couples do we know that are actually help hat <laughs> drunk? <laughs> How many married couples do we know that are actually happy or just long-term monogamous couples? Like usually they reach like a three-year, four-year mark where they might be pretending and it's not really happy anymore. So like that's and dope. I think the reason this person started with that, like right at the beginning of their TED Talk, was because there is that stigma mm-hmm. about it not really working out. And this person is saying like, you know, objectively speaking, they're – like a takeaway poly and everything they're the happiest couple that I know and that really says something you know yeah yeah I love this love them and rooting for them all the fucking way 
But yeah. all right, I think it's Let's time to, to wrap, wrap up. up. No, 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 no. <laughs> So go ahead. You okay. want to? Okay. <laughs> so let's wrap up the episode as we always do, talking about what we're wet, dry, and confused about this topic. I will go first. Okay. I'm just wet in general, honestly, about open relationships. Our growth. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we always say that, but I'm wet about open relationships, and I'm really like wet about like me figuring out what it is I really want, and I'm glad that I'm doing this while I am alone. Because I think now's the time and I know what to look for in the next partner. Even if I do get in a monogamous relationship, I want to have a lot of these conversations that people in open relationships are having and figure out what works for us because monogamy doesn't have to be so fucking like solidified in the way that society has created it. I'm also definitely wet about learning from your experiences. Like I think it's so cool to have a best friend that has had very different type of relationships than my own because like in helping you get through these things and learning from you and being there with you, like I have just learned so much, you know? Yeah. Well, for one of them though, we weren't friends for part of it. So that one I didn't know as much. But still, like, it's just so dope to learn from your experiences because it humanizes it. You're not just like, right. oh, this is like this weird thing that goes against society. You're like, I know an actual person and they've had these experiences. So I love right. that. What yeah. about that? Yeah, I would say I agree with all of that. I would say I'm wet on my, like, personal, like, growth on unlearning jealousy because mm. I think I really used to be so much more jealous than I was. And I think... From my first open relationship, like, I was unlearning it because I was, like, kind of forced to. Otherwise, I was going to be upset all the time. Right. And then I think when I got to my next open relationship with my ex-boyfriend, like, yes, it was still hard. But, like, I did not care, like, nearly as much. And I also think I expected less of him. So that's, like, part of it. Mm. But I'm just, what about that? And I feel like I haven't been unlearning my jealousy in terms of, like, really looking inward and journaling. But, like, I have, like, had so many conversations. I have, like, have a lot of practice of having, like, the jealousy conversation and boundaries and all that bullshit. Um, But I'm wet about open relationships, too. Like, I think it's cool to just even talk about and, like, entertain. Um, And like I said, like, I'm wet about you know, I hope the next person that like I'm into romantically, like I think a reason it would really turn me on is if someone was also like not necessarily poly all the way, but someone that was intrigued and like right. thought that maybe it could be a better way to live. I think that would like turn me on because I'd be like, yes, yeah, same. Like, let's talk about it. Yeah, especially if they had like some education that they were bringing to the table with it versus you just teaching them everything. Right. Yeah, I think I'm dry, obviously, about the stigma, obviously, about society and how we're just like pushed this monogamy fucking narrative that isn't always healthy. Like there are other options. I'm also definitely dry about like our brains and how they're wired to fucking destroy us. Like there is no lion. Like we have homes and healthy bodies and all this other shit. Um, I'm also dry about why more people just don't go to therapy because I think a lot of this really is like thought work or at least like listen to podcasts to educate yourself. Like if you guys are listening, you're already on a better fucking start. Not that all of our advice is always the healthiest. Some of it is toxic. Seek out other resources from real therapists and all of that stuff. We're not giving medical advice, but I still (laughs) think like, you know, I wish more people were curious about this stuff. Like I'm dry that more people don't realize that they might be the problem. And I think that that breaks down a lot of relationships um, and prevents us to, you know, realizing that monogamy is not it and that there's other options and all that stuff. And that's what we talked about. Like this jealousy shit, it's about like having self-responsibility about where you play the part, you know? So yeah, I'm dry about the society shit. I'm dry that monogamy is the norm, all that um and I'm dry about the stigma I feel like it's like it's just like really real and it's like I hate when people like look at you sideways or crazy because you do like open relationships it's like how could you do that to yourself like I don't understand that I don't understand that it's like okay cool then you you don't have to yeah Yeah. and I think this one of the other things with the stigma that we didn't completely talk about and I think it'd be a different episode but is like the over sexualization of the stigma right 
which is a big thing where people will be like, oh, like they're just a hoe or oh, they're just super horny or whatever. And it's not always that. Like some of it Men isn't and even women sexual. Both. Yeah, yeah, both. But for confused, I'm honestly, I'm confused about the line, I think, between like when you need to work on it yourself and, you know, internalize it and go to therapy and work through it that way versus when it's like maybe the relationship's not working for you or like, right. you know, because I like, again, it's that whole like intellectually, you know, emotionally, you don't. Where is the balance between where it's actually helping you be inspired and achieve growth versus like causing you long term trauma and making you a more insecure person? And like because polyamory also does have the stigma that's tied to um, polygamy, where it's like more like cult like shit. Like, even with one of the YouTube videos you mentioned, like, I can still be skeptical on those senses because, like, I think whenever you're stepping away from something that's, like, a societal norm and you're trying to do something different, it can be healthy and it can lead to a better society, but it can also potentially go down this cult-like way where this person is, like, manipulating you and controlling you because if you don't have, like, your own knowledge and whatever. So, like, that's the part that's a little iffy for me. But I think it's just more education and knowing really who you are, what your standards are, all of that shit. That was such a good confuse, Gigi. (laughs) Thank you. That was because like same bitch. Like I fucking feel you because I I really like with my ex-boyfriend. It's like, was that a healthy open relationship or was that like a pretend open relationship? When I was, like, saying we're open to be, like, no, like, he's not taking advantage of me. Right. Like, you're almost, like, reclaiming it because you're prote- – right. Where's the line between – Right. Where's the line? And I think it's just, like, with the right person, it's, like, you'll you'll know. And I think, like, when you're doing the work to unlearn your jealousy in a specific relationship, as you're, like, thinking about it, it'll it'll – I feel like you'll realize whether it's you or if it's just, like, this person is, like, not good for you, like, as you're doing that work. So maybe that'll help or whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, like, confused about um, – the whole thing about, like, jealousy being normal confuses me and the whole thing about – like I'm the jealous type, but you're not confuses me because if jealousy is normal and we're all acknowledging that this is an emotion that we all feel is the jealous type thing. Is that just another way for like society to categorize us? Like, I feel like that's also like a movie thing. I don't know. Yeah. No, you're right. Cause again, like how I said earlier, like when you tie it to your identity, it feels more permanent But some people really do just feel less jealousy than other people. So then it's, again, where's that line and how much of it is, like, work you need to do versus, like, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's, like, people that are less jealous. It's, like I said before, like, their insecurities are just, like, maybe coming out in something else. It's, like, maybe they feel jealousy. They just don't feel jealousy within, like, relationships. Right. And I don't know. That's their superpower, I guess. Or they're neurotic in a different way. It's not always insecurity. It could be neuroticism. Right. right. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, I think that about does it for this episode, guys. I really hoped you liked it. Um, wherever you are, if you could please subscribe and follow and like and comment, it would mean so much to us. Um, help us hit our quarterly plan. Goal, yes. <laughs> um, I'm making re- spreadsheets, bro. Like yeah. I check them every week. Like we have goals. We really, at the end of the day, we <laughs> build our community. We want you guys to be involved. We really appreciate every single one of you that post responses and all of that. I'm also getting really drunk if you can't it's tell. It's to our polls. Yeah. And so – We also are active on Instagram and TikTok like every week, like sometimes every day. Like we try to post as much as we can. Like we do skits. We have memes. It's a great time. We also want to get our Twitter back up and running um, Mm -hmm. and all of those platforms literally everywhere. We are at So Wet So Dry. The O's are zeros. Um, and yeah. Yeah. And we also have listener support. If you guys are listening on Spotify, even if you're not head over to Spotify, we have listener support, 99 cents, 499 or 999 a month. Just to be completely fucking transparent with you guys, we're not getting paid right now. We make zero <laughs> they money <know> that. <laughs> from this podcast. We had brand deals in the past and we have made a l- 
microscopic amount of money from ads a while ago. But like, this is all out of pure delusional fucking determination. determination. So, and you don't know, support us. You could be one of the first, you know, when we How make exciting it. is right. that for you? Like, screenshot our Instagram number because one day it will be bigger. Immediately. And you could yeah, be bitch. like, I was one of the first to provide listener support. So we love you. Please do that. Even if you don't, I still love you. Thank you for following yeah. us. And if you're on Spotify, also give us a rate. Mm-hmm. Rate us five stars. If you want to rate us four stars or under, just don't do it. I, I can um, take a four. A four no. I, I can accept. No, bitch. I mean, we're for, four why? eight on Spotify right now. That's so yeah, pretty good. Five. It was five. I don't know who brought us down, but oh. it's probably a hater in my personal yeah. life. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we hope you guys like this episode. And as always, our email is also open for topic ideas and suggestions. As, uh, so what? So dry the Ozer zeros at gmail.com. And we will catch you guys next week in the next episode. Okay. Bye. bye. <laughs> I've pretty much done it consistently with the majority of people that I've been with. And it's ranged from like the vanilla no stop like pretending I don't want it when I really do to like more like essay territory rate play like I have done that okay I have done that um and it's something I feel a little nervous talking about on the internet (laughs) 